Uh, hey, it's me again. Uh, you may have noticed it's very cold in here. The boiler is once again broken. Um, so if you'd like to complain to anybody, uh, or if you want to do another change.org petition, you could reach out to the president or the vice provost, provost and uh, ask them to get a new boiler for the chemistry building, or even better, we could get a new chemistry building, although that would be extremely expensive and would take a really long time, but it wouldn't hurt. Anyway, so we're gonna get into, uh, back to electrochemistry, we're gonna look at standard reduction potential. So hopefully you watched the last video or you read the previous section, you saw that for voltaic cells, we're gonna get a specific amount of voltage. And uh, it's gonna vary depending on what our cathode and our anode are. Uh, so how do we know that? How do we know that if we mix copper and zinc, we're gonna get a certain voltage as opposed to if we do whatever, sodium and lead or something like that. Um, we know what those potentials are or, or how do we know what that half reaction is and if we mix this half reaction and that rea half reaction? Because obviously we can't carry out a half reaction by itself. I can't only do oxidation or only do reduction. If something's losing electrons, there has to be something else there taking them. So we're not, of course, only doing a half reaction. What we're doing is comparing it to a very specific reaction. Uh, and in this case, it's using the standard hydrogen electrode. So we're looking at either the oxidation or the reduction of hydrogen gas and how does that relate to the voltage that we get from the other side of that, that half re or that other half reaction. So here's the electrode here. We've got to use an inert electrode, in this case platinum. We couldn't make it out of solid hydrogen because we don't really get solid hydrogen and it's also not very conductive. And then what we'll have to do is pump in hydrogen gas and that would, um, in this case, oxidize and go to H plus ions or vice versa, we'd have those H plus ions be reduced and go to H2 gas and come out of there. But everything's gonna be compared against that SHE, that standard hydrogen electrode. And we're gonna call that, assign it an arbitrary value of zero voltage. So we're gonna see how is the voltage of that other half reaction stack up against that standard hydrogen uh, electrode. So here's an example. If we're running this with zinc, we see that in this case, the uh, standard hydrogen electrode, the hydrogen is reduced, and then the zinc is spontaneously oxidized. And this is gonna be, um, go to a state of a lower potential energy, and we're gonna see that this voltage different compared to that standard hydrogen electrode is negative 0.76. So because that's a negative voltage, that means this is gonna occur naturally or spontaneously. We're not gonna have to alter that. If we looked at the opposite, where instead now the uh, standard hydrogen electrode is the cathode. It's going to be spontaneously, re or it's going to be reduced. And in this case, if we paired it with copper, the copper is going to be oxidized. Well, you'll notice the uh, potential energy for those electrons going from that state where there's the copper up to the hydrogen is gonna go to a higher potential energy. It's gonna be non-spontaneous. And we have a positive voltage. That means to run this reaction would require that we put in 0.34 volts of energy to drive this non-spontaneous process. So here's two examples, one being spontaneous, uh, or sorry, this is the opposite. So if we flipped it and got the opposite process, we would see then the opposite sign here. Um, yes, yep. So how do we measure that? We're gonna set up in one cell our um, standard hydrogen electrode, and in the other, whatever reaction it is we happen to be monitoring or for whatever element, zinc, copper, whatever. And we're gonna see, is that occurring naturally, spontaneously? And if so, how much voltage, what uh, amount of electrons do we get passing through this voltmeter here? Or if we hooked it up and it didn't happen at all, we'd have to start putting voltage into it. And at what point, at what threshold of voltage do we then start to see that those half reactions occurring? Um, and then we would know the, the potential for that and would be positive instead of negative. Um, so standard hydrogen, like I said, uh, electrodes defined as zero. Um, if we have a half reaction with a str stronger tendency towards reduction, then we would have uh, a positive value for the uh, cell reduction. If it has a stronger tendency towards oxidation, we would have a negative value um, for any half reaction whatever we have for the oxidation, the reduction is the same value, but opposite in sign. Um, 
and then that's equal to the E cell. This part here though gets a little confusing. Know the principle, but you're probably not gonna actually end up using it very often. Um, so here's our table of standard electrode potentials from the book, and it's actually very long. Here's the top half, here's the bottom half. This is in your textbook though. You don't have to memorize this, but you might consult this and end up using this quite a bit. So you can see all these different potential el single elements or compounds, and one part of that compound specifically, uh, in this case, being reduced. These are always written as uh, reductions or standard reduction potentials. You can see all of these have positive values. So they're going to have a higher tendency towards reduction, a lower tendency towards oxidation. And right here is at zero is where we should see our standard hydrogen electrode. So we can go to that, and there it is right there. And then everything below that now having an, a negative um, E value. So uh, less likely now to be reduced, much more likely to be oxidized in a reaction. Um, so conceptually, how do we use this? Well, how do we think of these? So we'll start with this one. An electrode has a negative electrode potential, which statement is re correct regarding the potential energy of an electron at this electro uh, electrode. The, the electron at the electrode has a lower potential energy than the SHE. So it's uh, going to be below the SHE. The electron at the electrode has a higher potential energy. Um, so it's going to be up here. And if the electron at this electrode has the same potential energy, well, it shouldn't be the same because then it would be positive. So for us to have a negative electrode potential should be that it has a lower potential energy than it has at the SHE. So it's going to um, require us to go, uh, it's going to decrease essentially or increase in stability, I should say. So all right, we'll stop there and keep this video nice and short. And then we're going to go to um, the second half of this and look at how do we calculate that E cell value from those potentials.